In this video, I'll show you how to design a pantograph that will not work with Power Panto because of the specific design. So let's just dig right in and I'll show you. My quilt is 50 inches wide by 50 inches long. So I'm changes those siding, changing those sizes at the bottom. And let's say I want to use this flower and leaf petal. So I click that <clears throat> now. See all the white space in between here? I don't want that because I want my flowers to nest. So if I come down to the flip and try these options, none of these actually work. I'm still, I've still got the white space no matter what. So at this point, you need to go into advanced mode, which is down at the bottom, click the power panto, and you'll see your options here. Select advanced. Now, at this point, you'll see my row height is 50, which is too much. I can only stitch 14 inches. So I want to increase my rows. Let's do five. Okay. Now I need to select all of these rows. So you come down to the middle here and select all. And now I'll select that same pattern, the daisy leaf, flower and leaf. I call it a daisy, but it says flower and leaf. <coughs> And now it comes up as one pattern. And of course, that's too big. So I want to add several patterns to each row. Let's go with, well, let's go back with three. And now see how they are not joined? The way to make those join, of course, is right here in the middle. I'm going to select this placement. OK, now I want to move every other row. So come down to the bottom under Select and select Alternate. And now select Move. And I've got my step on medium, so it's going to move at a medium rate. And I'm just going to scoot these over until the alternate rows are lined up kind of in the middle of the daisies above them. You went one too far. And notice when I did that, that it's disjointed here again. So you've got to come down to the placement and select um, the, per the correct nest mode so that those two pieces touch each other. Now I'm ready to size it so that these daisies will go up and fill in this white space. So I want to select all, all of my rows. I'm going to click Size. And then I'm going to select the vertical sizing button. I don't want to change them um, horizontally, just vertically. Now you can see that I could move those alternate rows over to the right again a little bit. So I'm going to select alternate, move, and move them to the right just a hair. Now I'm going to select all again, size, and that nested them even more so. And you can just keep playing with it until you like what you see. Now, uh, you'll notice some white space at the bottom and the top. And if you want to fill that in, you can. If not, you can leave it like this. And this will be open at the top of your quilt. And this area will not be stitched at the bottom. But the way to fill that in is through the vertical fit nesting portion, which is, is this section here. So if you click once nothing happened there now uh oh see what happened the petals at the bottom cut off and are sewing at the top well you certainly don't want this so the reason for that is row one and row five are the exact same so that's something to watch out for and a way to get around that is to change your rows back down to four. Okay, I still, I'm still within the height of my stitch area, which is 14 for my machine. So I'm select, I've got all selected, and I'm going to change the size and nest these back up together. And I have the vertical nesting on as well. So now what happens is the bottom of row four is what fills in at the top of row one. And if those are, see how they're overlapping here and you may not want that, just select the um, 
the shrink button, so shrink them vertically enough so that they don't touch. And so now that's how you would sew or how you would create your quilt when it will not work in power panto mode. And when you come over to sew in zones, of course it's going to ask you to um, to save your design. And oh look, my safe area is too big. You see what I did? My safe area is 14 inches. When I enlarged these, they went to 14.5, and that's too big. So I've got to come back and either shrink my patterns to here, maybe. Maybe to here, and then they'll fit. Or the other option would be go back to five rows and delete the option to fit vertically. So now let's see if it works. We're sewing in zones. Now it's giving me a message that the zone height was adjusted to accommodate the design. Um, I do wish to proceed. It's 96% of the safe area, so I'm not going to have a lot of wiggle room, but I'm okay with that because I could, um, I know how to deal with that when I place my design. So I'm going to save this design as Daisy. And now we're ready to stitch the first row. And see the uh, see the white, I'm sorry, the blue dots at the top? Those are jump stitches. So in other words, my, my machine wants to stitch to here, and then it wants to do a long stitch over to here. Well, we don't want those because I'm going to place this so that all of this stitching is either on the edge of my quilt, within the area where it's going to be bound, or it's over the top of the quilt and will not show. So I'm going to go up to optimize, and I want to get rid of all these blue dots. The quickest way is to select at the bottom, remove all. Do you wish to connect the first and last points? No. Rarely ever do you want to do that. I clicked yes, but see what happens when you click yes. This was my end point. Now my machine would stitch a line from here to here. You do not want that. So I'm going to cancel this, go back into optimize. Okay, and so another way to check is, this is the slower way, of course, select check for breaks and animate stitching, and it's going to stitch and say, stop here and say, do you wish to remove this break? Yes. And every time it stops, it asks you, do you wish to remove this break? And you just keep hitting yes until it gets to the very last one. And it's going to ask you, do you want to connect the first and last points, which you do not, right here. And so you select no. And now select OK. Now all of those jump stitches are going. And all of this up here is going to stitch at the top of your quilt, hopefully outside of your quilt, depending on how you placed it. So I'm going to move my machine to the center of my quilt. This arrow represents the needle of my machine. And then I come down to the bottom and select place. And the design is placed right in the middle at the top of my quilt. And then you just continue with pulling your bobbin. You're going to get these messages about the needle. Pull your bobbin up. Hold both threads. Click Sew. And once your machine starts sewing, you can go back and clip those threads. Now, I recommend not clipping those too soon because as your machine starts to stitch, say, this half circle here, it's going to pull on the thread a little bit. And if you have cut it too close here, your machine's going to come unthreaded. Um, that's happened to me many times when I try to get in a hurry. So don't get in a hurry with that and just continue to stitch out zone by zone until your quilt is finished.